All right, what is poppin', people? We're back. June 30th. Tomorrow, we will get the big tier shift. And, you know, me being the guy that hosts the VR thread on the new sub form, I was like, you know what, guys? Let's get one more update. One more for the boys. A and the girls, I guess. Anyhow. The idea was we wanted one last retrospective of what Inu looked like with Flygon, because again, losing it's going to be a massive shakeup. And we thought, hey, there's no harm in doing this. It's just kind of something cool to do. Plus, NUPL is coming to a close, and I do think it makes sense to have something representative of what NUPL and even like NU Open. And I I guess home field, like round one of that. <laughs> All these just different NU tours, if you aren't aware. What these have shown us over the past last few weeks. And there are some very major changes here, at least in my eyes, so let's get into them. And I would say one of the first big changes would be Bronzong, solidifying its spot as an S minus ranked Pokemon. And there is some reasonings here from Mary Berry herself. I'm gonna give my own just because, you know, that's how I do. Also, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Yeah, that's nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so wow, my mic is saying I'm speaking way too loud, but I know that's just not true, so whatever. Anyhow, so why is Bronzong at S minus? There's one answer: Iron Defense, Body Press. Iron Defense Bronzong sets, and I'm even talking like dedicated Iron Defense sets, have been increasingly common over the past few weeks. Like over the last month, you've seen a lot more Bronzongs opting for these bulky sweeper-esque sets. Think about like a Calmine Cresselia or even like OU, Calmine Clefable, that type deal. Where you take advantage of just how good Bronzong defensively is, how bulky it is, and how strong that body press gets as you set up. You get set up on a lot of common Pokemon, such as say Flygon if it locks into a bad move, Tyrantrum if it locks into a bad move, it gets choice specs like Splout even, you force that out. Except it gets things like Braviary even. It's honestly a really good answer to Braviary. Oh, well this wasn't supposed to switch. Here we go. We can loop this one, I guess. <laughs> Anyhow, and we've seen these sets pop up because, well, there are a lot of variants to them too, right? And that increases the difficulty in trying to take them down. I'd say the most common variant is going to be Rest Iron Defense. Makes it just so Bronzong's really hard to take down. Again, Really comparing it to Crest there, if you're talking about just a bulky setup sweeper with longevity. We've seen, like, Toxic Body Press, Iron Defense, and then, you know, whatever filler move, Psychic, Heavy Slam, Flash Cannon, etc. We even see Trick with a Toxic Orb. I first saw Roxy using this, but I think other people have tried it too. The big thing with that kind of set is... First of all, it lets you actually, like, beat Zatu. Otherwise, I think Helmet Zatu can stall you out. But Trick Tox Corp's really good for dealing with Vaporeon and Sylveon. If you watched the live that Aim and I did a couple weeks ago, I guess it would be at this point, where we had an Iron Defense Bronzong on our team, we queued into this one guy twice. And his team was kind of hard for Iron Defense Bronzong to make progress versus because he had a Sylveon. And, well, we can't beat it down. We had no way of crippling it. <laughs> And what Trick Talk Scorb lets you do versus that, in addition to Vaporeon, is say, okay, even if you have Heal Bell, you're never going to get rid of the poison. And obviously snagging lefties for yourself is really good. And this is all to continue saying as well that Bronzling's a great answer to things like Kabaraja if you run Heat Proof. Obviously you can go Levitate as well and be a great answer to things like Flygon. It's just got a lot of versatility to it that I think is super appreciated in this current meta. And we still see Celebi continuing, rising up the VR. Same reasons as last time, Vaporeon is still omnipresent in the tier as an incredible balance option, and Celebi can take super easy advantage of that Pokémon. There's nothing that Vaporeon can really do outside of maybe phase it with Roar, but even then it's like... It plots up against you and then you Roar. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Glad you confirmed you don't have Heal Bell. Or it's like, okay, you're toxic, but I don't really care that much because I still have natural cure and you don't really beat me anyway and again you revealed you're not heal bell so now you get o-code by toxic if I ever land one on you again we see a lot of responses within the VR right now I would say are partly because Vaporeon is quite common 
So, <laughs> continue assuming you'll see more of those going forward. Not even just in this update itself, but like, next month and onward. And otherwise, we see Explode finally break into the A ranks. I think Explode's an incredible option right now as a breaker. While it's not very bulky, like the H it, it's bulky enough usually to shoot like one neutral hit, but Boom Burst with Stab and Specs and Scrap- oh my lord, it's just so unfair. And then, to add on to that, Explode's coverage is really dirty. You got moves like Hydra Pump, Overheat, and Focus Blast to all deal with the Steel and Rock types that would otherwise maybe, you know, take Boom Burst reasonably well. You know, things like Copperaja just getting dropped by Overheat, Dancy getting dropped by Hydro Pump. It's just real nice to see. And even things like Heatproof Bronzong with Special Defense Investment, you're still getting weakened pretty significantly, right? It's just a really straightforward wall breaker. There's not a whole lot of thinking that goes into it, because you don't ever really even have to make those plays. They're good to make because they make spamming Boom Burst infinitely easier, but because of the sheer power behind it, it's not like you really are ever forced into predicting. It's just, again, straightforward mod. You switch it in off of a slow pivot, and you Boom Burst. And I even think there's something to say about the fact that it is a normal type. And with ghost types like Decidueye being pretty good, it is nice to have a mod that can switch into those if they choice lock into a move. If you can play really aggro with it, you can get rewarded. We see Braviary as well, rising up to B+. And I would say this is partly in response again, because normal type defensively is really good. I'd say Braviary in general offers a good amount defensively. But there are a couple of like interesting set variants that I have seen a little bit more use lately. Roost 3 attacks with a steel move is really cool for luring Deancey. Even like Scarf on um, Spike stack is really cool, because Spikes have seen a little bit more use lately. You can probably tell through some of the other rises here. <laughs> but it's also a pretty potent win condition if you're going like sub bulk up, really good at taking advantage of passive options like Vaporeon. And even like offensive bulk up's really good because it lets you deal with foes like Deancey and Bronzong a little bit more effectively. Now we did cover again Bronzong earlier. Iron defense sets are kind of a cock block for <laughs> Braviary, but they're not always iron defense, so you can get by those. And again, if you're sub, then a lot of the time you just beat Bronzong anyway if it lacks iron defense. And now here's a little bit of a funny shift, one that I hate to see because I hate when Pokemon bounce between ranks for no good reason. But Tyrantrum does go back up to B+, and I kind of just have to see Demary Berry's reasoning down here is the best way that I could put it as well. Yeah, Tyrantrum is still like a... If you click Head Smash, it's still not fun to switch into. And that's really it, especially for teams that do rely on Flygon as their means of checking it. You know, you get outraged once, and haha, now you lose to my, like, Nasty Plot Salazzle in the back or something. This rise is pretty much just indicating, hey look, CB Tyrantrum is scary. We should probably give it a little bit more respect, despite it still having a fair amount of counterplay that limits its overall efficacy. And now we get to the first showing of why spikes are good, and why, you know, even Brave Area Rose, Garbodor rising to be. And while its use is overall really limited, you pretty much are seeing the same set every time, same EVs. It's a good mon. Spike, again, it's the best spiker in the tier. It's a pretty good surfetched answer, all things considered. You know, the tier otherwise kind of just devoid of surfetched checks, especially defensive ones. Garbodor steps up and is like, hey, I can threaten you with a lot of recoil and potentially just trade KOs versus you. And if you're leak, I kind of do still beat you. I think. <laughs> if I remember it correctly, you can deal with Leak Fetched as well. As we said, pretty much the set's always going to be the same. It's like Gunk, Stomping Tantrum, Spikes, Pain Splits, what I always see with Helmet. <laughs> There's not a whole lot else to say. And Garbodor just kind of sets Spikes and hopes that it can at least answer one thing defensively. Usually, usually it's going to be a Surf Edged. We also see Absol rise back up to C+. It dropped, I think, a couple of votes ago. And part of it's because when you compare Absol to its competition, in terms of offensive dark types, so you're going to be looking at Drapion and Guzzlord primarily, Absol offers like a much stricter like offensive route, 
Whereas Drapion and Guzzlord offer a lot defensively, Absol says, I do nothing defensively. I might take one resisted hit. That's it. That's, that's really it. <laughs> Absol just has a lot of sheer power and really good coverage. That combination of like 130, or I think it's 130 base attack, potential super luck critting, and moves like Iron Tail in close combat really do make playing into Absol a pain. And I also value Sword Stance sets a lot. I think with how reliant teams are right now in dealing to handle like Pokemon like Absol on just faster foes like Talonflame and Salazzle, Scarf Flygon, Absol, if you get that plus two, a lot of teams kind of just fold. Now, obviously that means you're dropping coverage and it's usually going to be Iron Tail. But Sylveon's not the hardest mon to pressure. You, if you get the knockoff on it, you can potentially push it into plus two CC range. But that plus two sucker is just so good at preventing mons from revenge killing you. Again, especially when you look at what a lot of common revenge killers are. If Passimian were more common, I would not be as high on Absol as I am. But Passimian, as it stands right now, still isn't seeing a lot of usage, despite it being probably a little bit of a sleeper pick. And we do see Rhydon, these nuts, rising up to C+. And part of this is just the VR Council being like, Yeah, right. <laughs> there is at least one person I know heavily promoting Rhydon. I think it's Sabella. I believe they are really firmly on Rhydon as a, as a good Pokemon. Zard as well. And a big thing with Rhydon is what it offers is pretty much a kind of like blend between Diancy and Mudsdale. With a better Salazzle matchup than... Mudsdale, and a little bit better of a time getting by Zatu than both of them. Again, the key thing is that Rhydon maintains a really strong offensive presence while not folding to Lazzle. Even if it's a Sash one, you can run Rock Blast really easily and just say, okay, don't care, have fun, you're dead anyway. And, you know, not a good Volt Blocker, but if you need to just try to annoy your opponent and try to reposition that way, you know, switch into Volt Switch, switch out to something else on the Leaf Storm and get into a better position like that, then that does still work as well. And now, we, again, we see the ranking of Charizard. Now, Charizard originally was unranked several months ago because pretty much he decided, hey, Talonflame's better. What Zard offers is much better offensive potential with, like, it's really good, just strong Hurricane. And these Toxic Mystical Fire sets actually just letting you beat down Vaporeon. With the special attack drops, Vaporeon just does not get by you. You end up stalling it out with Toxic Poison and, like, Hurricane Damage. Do you have to still fear a crit? Yep. But it does give you an interesting amount of leeway around Vaporeon otherwise. And, you know, you can still poison things like, say, Sylveon, Mantine, Dancy, even the ones with these that run Heal Bell. You have more power points. So that's not too bad. And we do see a re-ranking of Silvalli Steel here as well. I couldn't tell you why we did, so let's see why Mary Berry decided to re-rank it. Uh, okay, Steel type with Defog, Possible Swords and Set. Doesn't have these. Yeah. I mean, my thing against Silvalli Steel is mostly that I think it's just faces too much competition to really find a good slot. What I will give it is that it's a lot of roll compression. Like Mary said, it's a steel type, it's a defogger, it could be a pivot, it could spread toxic, things like that. It's just, again, it's really hard to justify, but I can still see with how good Wish is right now, allowing Silvalli Steel a little bit more credence as a good Pokemon. And then the last Pokemon that's, you know, rising or being ranked is Ferrisseed. Again, spikes are really good, and this is a Pokemon that's seen a good bit of usage in NUPL. And by a good bit of usage, I mean, like, it's popped up in, like, a, more than a few weeks, getting, like, at least one use. It's not a mod that I personally have used myself, so I don't have a whole lot to say here. But it does defensively answer a few things, like, say, Rotom Mo. It can annoy Copper Raja. It's a normal resist. It's a rock resist. There's just a lot of small things that it does, and it's a good team disruptor with shit like knock off and leech seed, you know? And now we're getting to the drops, and here's where we see some big shifts. These first two right here, Copper Raja falling out of S to S minus, and Rotom Mo falling out of S minus to A plus. So, what's the deal? 
Well, with Cop Mirage, a lot of it has to do with two things. One, Flygon is viewed as the definitive number one as of now. And two, Bronzong rising and really giving Cop Mirage some legitimate competition. While Cop Mirage is without a doubt still an elite option, Assault Vested, Potent Breaker, still does a whole lot of good defensively. There have been at least some rumblings about like ladder reliability of Copper being a lot lower than Tor reliability. And just the fact the meta is so centralized to still stop it, it does harm its overall usefulness. When you have the, such high usage of defensive Flygon, of Talonflame, of even things like Salazzle, Bronzong with Heatproof and Physical Bulk, no matter how good Raj still ends up being, it's still a little bit hard to call it the number one, especially when Flygon is even more common. And I would say overall, at this point, a little bit more effective. Now, is Copper Raj falling off super hard? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> it's still one of the most splashable Pokemon out there. It still soft checks a whole bunch. It still offensively threatens a whole bunch just because of the raw power and coverage. But is it as good as it once was? No. And so why is Rotom O falling? Well, my dear viewer, if we go to the NU sub forum and we look at, let's see, where is it? Replay and statistics. Now I want to see if there's like an overall usage thing yet. I'm doubtful that there is. Like, let's just look at one week for Rotom Mo in terms of win rate. Ah, 28.5%. Um, how about week six? Ah, it lost every game. And this is a trend that's kind of just continued. Rotom Mo's success in NUPL has been kind of dreadful. And while on paper it is still an elite Pokemon with one of the most painful Volt Switches to try to contend with ever, in practice it has been falling short. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that there are a lot of Pokemon that still, like, check it, right? It's not like we're at a loss for defensive answers. It's the fact that this is just not there. Even if it can keep up momentum the whole time, it's just not having the same success that you would expect out of it. Hell, even Flygon right now is running a lot of speed, which means that Rotomo doesn't just threaten to two it KO it with Leaf Storm. Now, will Rotomo rise back up into the S ranks with Flygon gone? Maybe. But as of now, the success just isn't there. Next up, we do see a Guzzlord drop. Now, Guzzlord's still a really good Pokemon. It does a lot for you defensively. It's got coverage to bother a lot of the mons that you would normally see trying to answer it. Heavy Slam, of course, bothering a lot of the fairies that see a lot of usage. Spreading Toxic to bother Clerics and just other, you know, bulky Pokemon. But I would say that it's just kind of one of those mons that loses you momentum. And so as a result, it can be a little bit annoying. I think I want to see Mary's reasoning here as well, because she really is used it a lot. Yeah, again, momentum and offensive sets. And I think this is the big thing right here. I like this point. Wish is really good. Guzzlord is a defensive Pokemon that does not benefit from Wish as much as you'd like it to. It's just a really awkward mod in the sense that it's like, I want to pair it with a Cleric, but that means I'm running Rest Talk, probably. I want Wish support, but it doesn't really get a lot from it. If I run Offensive Guzzlord, I kind of call into question why I'm not running a Drapion or even an Absol. Now the answer is for the blend of offense and defense, of course, but... You know, again, it just it doesn't have that durability you'd like for a Pokemon as slow as it, and frankly not... It's not that strong. You want to get run out of your coverage, but Guzzlord, you know, it's a natural power. Kind of lacking at times. We'll see how Guzzlord continues to go. And we see Delmize unfortunately just continues falling. A lot of it has to do with it not being... I'd say the teams that you want to run a Delmize on aren't that common or good right now. And just looking at other options, I mean, I'd always run around Decidueye over it. Do they do different roles? Of course, but I just prefer Decidueye in that slot. I prefer other Grass types, I prefer other Ghost types. Hazard Control, I just don't think you need Delmize. And like, Delmize's synergy with the other Spiker is not the best. Delmai's Garbodor is fine, but it's just... I don't like it in SS in you. I like it in SM in you. I think in Sun and Moon, Delmai's Garbodor is like super good standard. But Delmai's in general is just better in that generation. 
part of it because the Z moves. We, that's a whole other discussion for another day. And now we're going to get down to the dredges of the VR. So we're going to kind of zoom zoom with these. Inteleon drops. Why? Because it's bad. It doesn't beat much of anything. Even with like setup sets. By setup we mean focus energy sniper crit fishing sets. They're just not that strong. Vaporeon's everywhere. Enough soft checks are everywhere. Inteleon has no bulk. It doesn't really revenge kill things either with Scarf. It just kind of lacks an identity, really. Jellicent drops, again, competition with Vaporeon and a kind of limited focus in terms of what it wants to do. I think a lot of its viability is tied to checking Glastray. And while Glastray is ranked rather high on the VR, I mean, I personally disagree with it being A+. I think its usage is not there. Its effectiveness is there, but it kind of becomes a little harder to justify when the mod isn't used that much. And then again, it's like, why not just use Vapo? Quillfish drops. Why am I not using Garbodor? I don't know. Weezing drops. Why am I not using Garbodor? Like, Dragalge if I want a T-Spike setter. I don't know. I think the big niche to Weezing, frankly, is neutralizing gas. Or just some weird compression of, like, traits that it offers over both Dragalge and Garbodor at once. The problem just ends up being that it's like it's so hard to justify because you only need it in very specific situations. Zoroark drops. When was the last time you saw Zoroark perform at a high level? And do anything? It doesn't see meaningful tour usage. Does, on ladder, sure, it sees usage in like low rank games. It just doesn't do anything though. It's too weak, it's too frail. It's not it's not it. We see a Hitmonlee unrank. Why am I using Hitmonlee? A lot of this comes down to terrain teams just as of now not being that great. And I do think Hitmonlee really excels on those sort of just really aggressive hyper offense builds where in tandem with other teammates, it's able to really overwhelm its answers. Scyther gets unranked. It's been on the VR for the last couple of shifts, but it just really hasn't picked up at all. And at a point, it just becomes hard to justify keeping around. And it's the same thing with Uxi. I think Uxi is probably still worth maintaining a rank, but it really just isn't seeing the usage as of now. That's going to be it for this update, guys. Um, one last little shift at the VR, obviously. I'll slowly scroll down so you can see. I'm pretty happy with it and you as, as a tier. I know some people still, of course, have qualms with things like Surfetch and Blastoise. But I think overall, we're at least at a point of relative balance. That's reasonable. And I'm pretty interested to see where the tier goes without Flygon. I mean, leave your thoughts below on that. How do you feel Copperaja will fit back in? Will it just retain its regain its spot as number one? Will Salazzle end up stepping up to number one? Does Rotomo finally get that ideal tier spot where it can just punish every build to too great of a degree? Will we finally see Surfetch get a suspect and ban? I know the answer to at least one of those questions. Um... <laughs> Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.